Okay, um, Steve's going to be here in a little while uh, to, let's have a look what we have here. Okay. So Steve's going to be here in a little while to do the bias chart while Blake is away. Um, in the meantime, we can have a look at uh, a couple of things to say uh, that we didn't mention on face. Um, it's worth not mentioning that there, the um, economic number data coming in from Europe and from Germany in particular is, um, is not looking terribly exciting at the moment. So we had some, um, some misses recently. We had another one today. So German industrial production expected that plus five plus 0.5 percent came in at negative 0.3 and it seems that the ecb has got still quite a few excuses to stay behind the curve in terms of tightening the biggest one being that inflation is still not above their target so last print has been around i think 1.9 percent so basically around the two percent target and um, we can safely assume that they're going to be a little bit more flexible with inflation running hotter than the target simply because they also are embracing this transitory inflation story, which we've said before, we don't think, uh, well, at least I don't think this is gonna be as transitory as they think. So, you know, numbers out of the uh, Eurozone looking a little bit worse. Then again, uh, in the US we had uh, Yesterday's numbers also were worse than expected. So it's kind of, you know, we're getting at this point where we're seeing, what is it, the fourth wave now of COVID? We have uh, countries like Australia closing down again and these variants um, which are taking over again. So it's, it's, it's a big mess and it's still a big question mark hanging around everything. And frankly, with, with this um, COVID story not over, far from being over, um, even with vaccinations going as well as they are, um, I think central banks are going to have excuses to keep doing what they're doing. So we have to be aware of that. Um, now, what can we have a look at? Actually, let's see. Um, we had to look at a lot of things on face. Um, what are equities doing? Equities are still uh, higher on the day. They're trying to recoup some of their losses from yesterday. The Nasdaq is doing is doing very well um, compared to to the others. It's uh, and the DAX also. So you know we're still within this ascending wedge in uh, in the DAX, and I really think there's probably going to be some kind of blow off top before we um, we go lower. But again, as I said before, on face for those who were there, we have to see yields move higher. End of story. You know, Treasury yields down here is just. Uh, incredible, incredible in my opinion. So we have to see yields going higher before we can see any kind of meaningful move in um, uh, in stocks. And and now the other thing which is on everybody's mind is, okay, so we get uh, yields going higher at some point, we get stocks uh, dropping. Where is the point where central banks are going to step back on the gas? And we know that they are going to step back on the gas. So where is that point? You know, is it... 10, 15, 20, 25%. I don't know where it is, but I think that this time around, the, um, uh, the drop in equities is going to be shallower than it has been before. Remember in the uh, 2008 um, global financial crisis, the drop in the S&P was, what was it, 65%. It was, it was a big drop. Now we had COVID and, you know, it's, it's, it's a situation that we hadn't seen in generations, right? And we dropped from you know, 3,300 to 2,200. So basically we dropped 30%. So unfortunately the way, you know, the way these, these markets are gonna work is that uh, the dips are gonna get bought and the dips, dips are gonna get shallower. Um, unless that is, we get some kind of extraordinary event that um, which, you know, it's some kind of black swan event and, and that, okay, that's going to be different. But, you know, if we get a natural drop in equities due to yields, due to another wave of COVID, due to whatever, I think the, um, uh, the, the, the drawdowns in indices are going to be relatively small. And that's because everybody knows the central banks are going to come in and they're just going to do more and more of everything. So uh, this is the reality that we're faced with. And um, this is how we have to trade it. 
So, um, you know, that's one of the main reasons why I'm very bullish in the medium term in uh, precious metals and miners as well. And I know that if there is a, a drop in equities in general, uh, miners are going to get hit. It's only natural. Uh, but I am going to be looking personally looking to add and look on the, um, the GDX chart, which is uh, basically I bought the breakout. So I am basically flat on this trade now. It was up really nicely at some point. Um, I took very little profits, unfortunately, on this turn. But uh, so I still have that position. It's half of the position I want to have. So if we get anywhere near this zone down here, I'm going to be adding because I think in the medium term, this is going higher. End of story. I don't, I don't think there's anything to stop that. Um, the only reason why this would not go higher is if we see everywhere central banks tightening really aggressively and um, um, deficits uh, reducing and basically going back to you know quite a few decades back in terms of economic um, uh, situations. So this is uh, something that I am, this is what I'm watching. I'm very light in positions and um, I don't know where Steve is. He's supposed to be here to do the bias chart, which I'd love to do for you, but I can't. I'm, I'm here. To look. Ah, there you go. Here you are. Yeah, I was just getting everything oh, okay, ready no as you were talking. No problem. No problem. Okay. Um, so I, I sent you the bias chart. I don't know if you saw it. I have it, mate. I, I, I'm ready with everything. Perfect. Okay. So I'll pass it on to you. Okay, and... mate. Super. Good. We're going to start with the bias chart and then move to uh, the rest. Perfect. Sure. Okay. So, um, hello, everybody, once again. I, I assume a lot of people are going, going to be watching the game today, Stelio. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it's a pretty big game, yeah. Uh, I, I think the chances of an upset are higher than people realize. I, but... I think it's 50-50. It is 50-50. Everybody uh, thinks England are the, war, the big favorites, but uh, anyway. I think it's 60-40, but still 40 is not negligible, you know what of I mean? Of course not, of course not. Yeah, um, anything can happen, literally anything can happen. I mean, who would have guessed the Norwegians started like with a loss? They lost also one of their best players. The, Dan the Danes, not Norwegians, yeah, the Danish. Uh, sorry, sorry, the, yeah. Yeah, oh. the Danish. They also lost like one of their best players at the first few minutes of the tournament. And still, <laughs> yeah, so still they've done. Let's see. Well. Okay, so, um, yeah, uh, let's start. You use the as usually I have the have the bias chart in uh, in another window. It's going to make my life, life a lot easier, and I'm going to pull it up afterwards. So um, we've had this move lower, which <clears throat> is still ongoing in the uh, Euro USD. We've um, uh, fibbed the uh, last leg of this uh, bull move higher. You know, clearly the Euro USD remains heavy. As we said before, it's uh, you know it's uh, not uh, anything unexpected because we do expect likely uh, more dollar strength in the short term. So I do believe that this uh, spike low, which we almost uh, retested yesterday at, uh, what is it, 118, let's say 118 flat, we're very close to that, uh, is going to probably be taken out, in which case the next downside um, target is going to be the 88.6% fee, but uh, 11770. So uh, I guess I can uh, put in 118, although it's close, but there is a good chance that we might not break through it until we get the FOMC minutes because the, uh, the market is expecting that, right? Now, on the other hand, um, today's high is at uh, 11835, uh, but the um, important level to look at is this 118.95, which was the high, also high of this beautiful four-hour reversal candlestick um, in this little reaction higher. So uh, I think like 118.95 uh, is, you know, the first area of resistance. We at least need to take out this uh, before we can talk about like a you know, a big rebound higher. Now, use the Swiss is tempting with a breakout out of this uh, symmetrical triangle. Um, first target will, of course, be the um, 
it's actually multi-month, right? Yeah, it's the multi-month high uh, we had here at 92.75. So 92.75 should be resistance. And, you know, in order for us to look for more downside, we definitely need to see a dip below 92. So 92 and 92.75 are the two levels. Now, uh, let's move to the pound. Here's the pound USD. So we've had this support area. Let me zoom out. We've had this support area that has held so far. I'm, uh, I'm of course, using the four-hour chart for the uh, bias chart and the bias levels, since we want to be focusing shorter term. Um, so we've had this uh, low and this horizontal support area, also the 88.6 uh, at 13740. So that is support 13740. While um, resistance should be that spike high at 138.99, in essence, 139. Right, uh, nothing to do as long as we trade between these two levels. This looks more like a consolidation, which you know has a very decent chance of getting a result to the downside. Uh, if, as we said, we do get post um, FOMC minutes something in the hockey side having to do with market expectations, because there's going to be nothing hawkish. But you know the market has completely shifted its ex expectations. So you know when the market keeps expecting more dovish and more dovish and more dovish language at some point even the absence of the more dovish language is interpreted as an quote unquote hawkish <laughs> message which of course it isn't hawkish but you know as i said it, it's just in essence a disappointment of extra dovishness that that's all it is right uh now uh, shifting to commodity currencies aussie and kiwi here's the aussie Here's the Kiwi, uh, you know, another consolidation, quite a choppy uh, move. We had a recovery higher. We had a, you know, strong move lower. And I have to say that this rebound higher, uh, really in comparison to the uh, latest move down that we had, looks corrective. Um, once again, I have no idea what's going to uh, come off the FOMC minutes. But, you know, what I see on the charts would favor some kind of a reaction that would be dollar bullish, right? So in that context, I think that um, 76 is a key level of resistance, while this spike low at 74.43 should be the next downside target. In Kiwi, we can even... I'll draw this as a triangle. There we go. Okay, here's Kiwi. So, uh, obviously, a lot of choppiness within this uh, range, within the context of this triangle. Uh, resistance clearly at 71 cents. 0.71 resistance. And support is at 69.60. Trend line passes from there as we speak. 06960. Now uh, switching to CAD and NOC, they're also consolidating in, we saw that yesterday in little triangles. Here's the CAD. So far has been playing out perfectly, right? From what we've drawn. Um, and this is likely another little bull flag or pennant that you see over here. So once again, technically speaking, uh, you know, I would favor a continuation higher towards that area in the case of USD CAD. But clearly, this is the second time we stalled at 2490, 124.90. So 124.90, 124.90 resistance with the first area of support being at 23.60. 12360. Use the knock. Here it is. Same deal, same kind of logic, right? 
um, resistance at 872. 872. Support 852. Okay, nice. You use DMXN. consolidating near the lows. As I was saying yesterday, when Gorkim uh, mentioned it, uh, yes, absolutely, the USDMXN can rebound from here as well. But just, for example, compare it to the two that we just saw, right? USD CAD and USD NOC. I mean, dollar seems a lot stronger against those, right? So from a relative strength perspective, uh, I would honestly go with one of those instead with uh, being long the, US, the USD against the uh, MXN. Having said that, 2010 is resistance. 2010 with support being at 1973. Um, Let's go to the DXY and the USD Yen. So here's the USD Yen. Still within this channel, right? You can see it here. Um, support currently passing from, what is this? 1.1030. 1.1030. And I'd say the first resistance being 111.10. DXY. So far has gone more or less, more or less as planned. I would still be looking for higher levels from here. I think we would at least retest this 93.43. Um, although I, I think it's very likely that we're going to see uh, higher levels than that. Uh, let me few extend the first leg higher with the second one and see where that targets. Okay. Let's see. Oh, sorry, I forgot. This is an extension, so not 200%. We want 100%. There it is. Yeah. 93.43 points to that as well. Okay. 93. 43. Okay, nice. So let me delete this as well. In any case, uh, first area of resistance is here. We've also put a um, an alert, 92.83. So 92.83 with the next target, as I said, being 93.43. So 92.83 and support being this spike low at 92 in essence. 91, 95, let's say. Now, gold, silver, Bitcoin, let's switch to those on the four hour chart. Let's start with the monetary metals. Here's gold. So let's start deleting some stuff here. Let's fib this move. Okay, 38.2 is the recent high, so nice confluence of resistances up there, and this will have to be 1814, our first resistance, so today's resistance, and on the other hand, support is going to be here, 1793, 1793, silver, little false break higher from this rectangle, 
back within the context of this rectangle. Uh, in any case, we need to take the spike high 2676. 2676 as resistance and as support is 26 flat. Bitcoin still coiling, as you see, within this triangle. And you can even see a little triangle within the triangle, right? There we go. So, uh, Bitcoin. Thirty two thousand eight hundred support thirty six one fifty resistance. As you see, really nothing to do here. I think that eventually we're going to get um, some kind of resolution to the downside uh, before we can really find some buying interest and the SP. Last but not least, now, you know, this, here comes the hard part. It's always hard to get targets when something is just moving constantly in all-time high territory, right? Incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's unbelievable. Um, clearly, 43.17 is you know, the first area of support, the spike low that we had. Um, I mean, you know, there is nothing uh, on any time frame that can be remotely interpreted as bearish as long as we trade um, above this. And of course, even if we break through this, in order to get, you know, something really going, uh, I'd have to say we have to take out 42.67. But in any case, 43.17, definitely the first area of support. Now, I'm not going to put as resistance the all-time high at 43.59 and a half because we're like literally two handles away from that. Uh, I'm going to put here the target I think we'll be looking at uh, once we break this. I will be looking for the 161.8% extension of this little pullback, which comes at 43.86, 43.86. Now let me pull the buy chart here. Okay, let me uh, copy it. Ah, oh, I just put them. Let me see if uh, if I can change the. Uh, how can I change it to to what? To American, uh, you know. It's okay. Uh, I don't think it's there. I think it's a system thing from Windows. It's not yeah, there. me do. I, I hope don't, don't that worry, there people, would be. People understand. Don't worry. Yeah, okay. It's, it's okay. Uh, let me just take a screen. Well, I think it's a Windows thing. It's not a, an Excel. Probably thing. it is. Yeah. Yeah. I can switch it though to text and do it, but whatever. No, yeah, no, it's okay. Let go. me take a screenshot here. Got it. Okay. Okay, still. I'm going to do that and then I have to rush off. So I will see you Shooting, mate. in a little while. Thanks, man. Absolutely, mate. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So now that we're done with the bias chart, um, let me see what there is to be said before we go into questions that we didn't already say in face because of Blake's absence. You know, we had the opportunity to talk about more things. In any case, uh, one of the things I wanted to visit was definitely crude oil. So crude oil uh, pared back some of its losses yesterday and did close uh, within the context of this uh, channel. Let's also have a look at it on the four hour chart. But I do think that there is a very good chance. And here is this channel on the four hour chart, right? Uh, but I do think that this little rebound higher looks corrective in nature. So I think there is a very good likelihood that we're breaking through this today. And that's going to be a nice trigger for at least one more leg lower towards 70 and a half. Let's also assuming 
let's make the assumption that that's what's going to happen. If we make that assumption, let's see what would the downside target be. Assuming that spike high was the high, the downside target would be at 71, actually. But I like this 70 and a half area, 70, 60, 70, 50, uh, which is just slightly lower, right? So uh, I think we break through this uh, and we're going to see at the very least one more leg lower, right? Because we might see a lot more than that because even a proper corrective move lower going back to the daily, I mean, just look at this move, right? You can have a corrective move lower and easily retrace $15, yeah, right? Not just, you know, another um, three dollars from where we are, right? But in any case, uh, one target at a time, one time frame at a time. So um, you know, I think there is a very good chance that we confirm this today. We're headed to 70.50 next, and you know, judging on how the price action unfolds, we we take it from there. Now, palladium remains extremely well bid increases even further the chances that we have indeed seen the low. So keep that in mind. 3,020 is the all-time high. Uh, you know, I think we should be pushing that um, rather soon. Um, give me a second to open the question box. Uh, natural gas. A nice pullback finally. Nothing unexpected here. We drew that several days ago. Um, you know, a pullback is healthy. Uh, I think a retest of 339 will probably produce a nice buying opportunity. We might even retrace a, a little bit more, right, to backtest this broken symmetrical triangle trend line support. But, you know, we might not even make it there. So, you know, don't you know, don't necessarily believe that. Look at the daily RSI. It hit 83. Um, as I've explained multiple times before, high momentum readings uh, can, of course, point to a potential um, snapback in price, but on the other hand, confirm the direction of the trend. So basically, this 83 RSI reading tells me that uh, the trend is higher, right? So you should be looking to buy pullbacks and not sell rebounds. Uh, that's all I'm saying here. Um, oil for short time trend. Um, I might not understand the question, mate. I did cover oil. Is there something else I, you want me to talk about having to do with oil? Something that, uh, something more than I, what I just already say. In any case, um, going back to the euro, keep in mind that a, a quite bullish interpretation would be this whole period of time being a symmetrical triangle, right? The reason I'm saying that is because we have this trend line support passing from 117.50, right? So I, I'm, I'm curious to see what's going to happen from that area if we see a push lower. Because if we do see a rebound from there, you know, I'm going to start, um, uh, you know, restricting my expectations having to do with how uh, high the dollar can rebound, right? Because we know that the biggest component of the DXY is the euro USD. So keep that in mind. 117.50, this trend line support, which isn't uh, like a random trend line, right? It has already passed during all these months from three different lows, some of them multi day lows, right? This one and that one. Um, so 117.50 is uh, the area I'm looking for as the next downside target. And if we break through that, then I think, yes, there is uh, there is a decent more to come in the dollar rebound. But if we do find support there, I'm going to be, uh, you know, uh, very conservative with upside expectations in the DXY. Here's the DXY. Now, um, completely 
ignoring the euro usd and what i just said about the symmetrical triangle this chart would tell me that there is room for the dxy to rebound towards this 94 50 38% fib towards like 94 70 80 that high right so just solely looking at the dxy chart i think there is more room uh, to the upside for this uh, correction to um, unfold um, as we've said with stelios there is a higher chance for the fomc minutes to bring uh, something in the forefront that will be interpreted as hawkish from market participants so i think the risks are tilted for a bullish dollar reaction following uh, the event if we get anything because there is in my opinion if you want my my actual opinion the highest possibility in my opinion is for this to prove to be a non-event so if i had to um if i had to uh, you know place odds to the three different scenarios i would have to say the highest probability is uh, a non-event uh, based on the reaction the second probability is going to be a uh, dollar a positive reaction and the lowest pro probability in my opinion is going to be a dollar negative reaction uh, following the FOMC minutes that's what I think um, anyhow questions don't be shy AUDC long term bullish medium term probably bullish very short term not bullish look at this little bear flag here if we go down on a one hour or four hour chart is going to to be more apparent so something like this is what i would imagine hey steve but if they didn't discuss dot plots the only hawkish thing then what else would be looking for from hockey's standpoint? I have no idea, mate, anything. And I say anything for the reason I explained before. We're talking about a market that has extremely dovish expectations. So we're not really looking necessarily for something hawkish to emerge for the market to react higher having to do with dollar. We're just looking for even the absence of something doves that the market would be looking for you know what i mean so even a slight change of wording in one thing or another in a way that's going to be less doves can trigger a reaction higher in the dollar from market participants that's the problem it's not easy to predict because literally the market dissects uh fed minutes fed speak uh, speeches so on and so forth um and analyzes even the coma right looking for anything that's not uh, you know green light for more dovishness so within that context i don't think the bar is set too low that's what what i mean right so it can be literally anything What is your bias going into the Fed minutes? Oh, already answered that. Uh, okay, anything else? Anything else you want us to look at? Oh, by the way, I mentioned yesterday, so I don't forget, just an update. I mentioned yesterday these crosses, right? Euro Aussie, Euro Kiwi, so on and so forth. Nice reversal yesterday uh the euro Aussie reversed completely its losses that's why i, I always would like to wait for uh, you know end of day candlesticks not always but almost always um but nothing has changed meaning the fact hasn't changed that this is in my opinion a corrective recovery and also what hasn't changed is that euro kiwi might have not broken down yesterday because it, it ended up closing and changing the day, but it's making a second attempt to break down today. 
So what I said yesterday about the Euro Kiwi and the possible breakdown uh, is has just been postponed for today. If we do close on a daily closing basis below this trend line support, I think this is going to be a significant technical uh, development here. And Euro Kiwi might just be leading the other three crosses, Eurozi, Pound Aussie, Pound Kiwi, right? If we expect the USD will strengthen FOMC, that means Euro will weaken. Will this mean that we can expect the DAX to rally even further based on negative correlation with the Euro? Yes, definitely. Listen, um, currency weakness is a tailwind for the indices, right? Now, as we've explained before, that doesn't mean that the DAX cannot be moving higher in conjunction with the euro moving higher or the opposite. The, the DAX is impossible to move lower if the currency is moving lower, right? But definitely uh, there is an extra boost for European indices from a weakening euro, right? So keep that in mind. So uh, if the trend remains higher, yes, they're going to do even better with euro weakening. Uh, if the trend is lower, they're going to be doing less bad with Euro weakening, that's a fact, right? And for the time being, speaking about the DAX since uh, conversation uh, brought us here, um, I still see this interesting RSI divergence. Uh, we still see clearly some momentum loss, but on the other hand, there is absolutely nothing, nothing technically wrong with what the index has done so far. We still have a sequence of higher lows, and there is a chance that this ascending triangle can just break to the upside and even get an acceleration high, right? Because this is not an ascending wedge that has like a steep inclination, which is the type of wedge that you know is most likely terminal, something like this, right? You know, an inclination like this makes it highly unlikely that this isn't going to be resolved to the downside to fulfill its target, right? But, you know, this is a totally different type of wedge. It's very shallow in inclination, which literally leaves both possibilities open, both a break to the upside and an acceleration higher, or a breakdown and a full retracement of the wedge, as theory would suggest in, in the case of a bearish breakdown, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, and GFI that was mentioned in yesterday's interview. Sorry, I, I was in a meeting yesterday and I didn't listen to the interview. Uh, what is GFI? Let me see, is, is it a ticker? Okay. Goldfields Limited. some kind of a complex corrective move unfolding here. But, you know, not easy to pull the trigger here, right? Because infinite scenarios, this is one scenario. Uh, we might just, you know, spend more time here, who knows? I do believe that this is a bullish consolidation, but, you know, go figure what happens from here. I mean, we're still uh, within the context of this larger triangle, you know, quite a distance from the closest trend line, which is the trend line support in this case. So, you know, I wouldn't be jumping the gun. Now, if you want a, a more general view, which would be the GDX, And, you know, and not a specific miner. You know, just keep the bigger context in mind, right? We found support at this, you know, key support area. We broke higher from this channel. Uh, we've been retracing lower once again, but uh, you know, this area remains important support, and I don't think it's likely that we're going to break through it. So GDX, um, 
you know, I think is not that far away from finding support uh, either within this uh, consolidation. Um, let me see. What else? Uh, I, th I think I covered all the questions that we currently have. Any, any other um, currency, stock, or whatever else you have in mind that you want us to cover? Done. Let's see what is done. Done. Yeah, it's bullish. It has had a bullish breakout. Uh, and it's resuming to the upside, right? We we were talking about this, you know, likely having found the low. We, we talked about scenarios. Uh, it was before we redrew this line, actually, uh, that I remember. Uh, we had this and we talked about that. And then when we continued higher, I redrew this trend line that we've probably already broken out. And if you look at this, I just didn't ever delete all this crap. But uh, US jolts or jolt openings, more or less as expected. So that's not going to be a market mover. mover. We just got this Canadian Ivy PMI uh, almost at 72. Previous was at 64.7, so quite a good uh, number. Now, going back to this chart, even if you look shorter term, we just broke through a pennant, right? There you go, higher. 99 being the next upside target, but I think you know, we might see a lot higher levels than that. Uh, Long-term projection of pound USD. Okay, that's an interesting question. Um, now, you have to always put things in context and know that long-term projections are not really, you know, that reliable. Uh, but in any case, my long-term projection about the cable would be a break above this horizontal support resistance area after we finish whatever we're doing here, right? And higher. That's my longer-term projection. I think we can see the Cable back to 150 easily. Easily. Now, short term proje projection, very short term projection, uh, remains probably for a little lower levels than where we currently trade, right? Um, NVCR, let's see what that is. Ah, look at this. This is beautiful. Right, we drew this some time ago. Look at this ascending wedge playing out beautifully. Right, we had said that. Now, this is a proper wedge in, in comparison to what we, the wedge we were looking before that I said can break in both directions. Right, when we were looking at this wedge, I said that, you know, worst case scenario, we're going to see a little push higher, but we'll need to see a full retracement of this. Look at this. Couldn't get better than this. Gapped lower, then pushed even lower. Uh, let me make it very, very clear. There is more downside to come, and I think there is a very high chance that we're fully going to be retracing this wedge. So back to 118.7. Uh, uh, PLTR. Mm, yeah, working out nicely. Uh, I said probably more downside before higher. We are in the probably more downside phase. 21 is an achievable downside target in this pullback before we can see some strength. Tesla. Yeah, Tesla, you know, looked like it was breaking out. 
flirting with going back in this channel, I think we need to give it a little bit more time. It looks to me like it wants to break out to the upside, right? But we might have a more complex correction unfolding from here. So I wouldn't be doing anything with Tesla as we speak. I think it's, you know, the this chart can, you know, there's a lot of merit to both interpretations, which would make me neutral for the time being. I want to see more price action. So instead of trying to force an opinion, I would just tell you to give it more time. AMD, nothing to say here. The chart says it all. We had seen that some time ago. I, I was expecting a bullish breakout. We got that. No surprise here. Uh, I think we're going to see triple digit AMD soon. Soon. As simple as that. Amat. Yeah. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know. No idea. Uh, there's price. I mean, there is a lot more price action missing here before I can. Uh, I can have a you know a better opinion. Who knows? Perhaps we are crafting like a larger triangle for something like this. Um, I would wait. I, I think medium to long term, this is going to be resolved to the upside once again. But short term, yeah, uh, short term, I wouldn't be long. So, yeah, just wait, trade something else for the time being. Use the INR. Mm. Let me find my own ticker then because I see no drawings there. Here it is. There we go. So last time we had a look at USD INR. This is what we drew. These were the two scenarios we drew. And look how, how beautifully it has played out, right? Came back, almost retested this channel's trend line support. Rebounded from here. It has now crossed through this intermittent resistance area. So one scenario remains, and it's this one, more consolidation over time. The other scenario is, you know, if it continues higher and breaks through this 7550 area, just straight higher. Right? So medium term remains without a trend. You can see why. Longer term, this looks like a big consolidation in a bullish trend. So the chances of a resolution to the upside are increased. Um, short term, uh, short term, I would be more cautious here, right? Especially the closer we get to the uh, trend line resistance, because even if it eventually breaks higher, which I, you know, just technically speaking, it looks like a favored possibility, but, you know, uh, who tells us that we can't spend more time within the context of this channel, right? So we might approach the trend line resistance once again, get rejected, spend more time uh, chopping around within the channel and eventually break one direction or the other, right? So, yeah. Okay, last one, because then I have to jump on a meeting. SMH, that's going to be the last one for today. And then we're going to be here. I'm going to be here again for the daily roundup. So don't worry if you have any more questions, we can cover it at the daily roundup. So SMH probably has broken out, right, from this symmetrical triangle. And if you ask me this in the short term, it seems to be forming a little bull flag there you go so i think higher higher 217 being the next upside target the closest one okay so see you all for the daily roundup bye bye